everyone, welcome back again to another video for the Homemade Smashbook series. Um, this video is going to um, go over the pages that we did in the previous video and I'm going to show you how to make the removable bookmark. Um, super simple. Everything's super simple <laughs> to me anyway. So I'm going to show you how to make that and then I'm also going to show you how to make um, the little zipper pouch unless you want to go buy one um, and then we'll see how long that takes so let's go over what we did real fast in the previous video um, as far as pages go um, I did screw up off camera on one of my envelopes so I had to redo that and I screwed up on one of my pocket pages I punched it on the wrong side so um, the way I set my pages is because of how I need to bind it so all of my my back pages I put in first because of my open rings being on the right hand side uh, for me using the bind it all so I'm gonna flip all my pages over and then I'm just going to stack them in so my last pages will go in first. So I'm just going to load this up. I punched all of this off camera just to save some time. And then here is one of the coin envelopes. And I just took the guide and punched that and I'm going to put it, oops, I'm going to put it in one hole down just so it's not right at the top there and then continue loading. I kind of changed the order a little bit. Um, here's the pocket page. And then I'm just going to keep going with the rest of them. And here is the other coin envelope and it was a purple plaid but I messed up so I just put some stars on there. Whoops, I keep hitting that. Then this is the other pocket page and I did redo this one um, because I punched it on the wrong side. So I had to redo it. And that is all of our pages. So this is where if you want to do any rearranging with your pages or anything um, you know between now and getting the bookmark and stuff done and putting the pouch in so once we're done with the pouch then we're gonna do the hinge and then after you put the hinge piece in you close up the wires so before you close up your wires make sure they are where you want them so I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside and I'm gonna show you how to do the bookmark and I just cut this piece of cardstock and it's just white recollections cardstock um, you could double it in fact, I might do that mm. because this is going to go to a little girl who may want to take this out a hundred times and move it around. So I'm going to get another piece of scrap cardstock and I'm going to double my cardstock really fast. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this bookmark. Actually, I'm going to get this out of the way so I don't knock it off. This bookmark is two and a half by five. Um, you can make any size you want. This is just the size that I like for these books that I make. So I'm going to cut it up five and two and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and attach these together and I'm just going to use my ATG tape I don't think it will really come apart I'm going to I'm trying to get as close to the edge as I can and then I'm going to just go down the middle a few times just to make sure that this doesn't try to separate it all. Then I'm just going to go ahead and adhere these two pieces together and hope that they line up. Eh, 
not too bad. There's actually one little spot over here that I do need to trim. So this is just going to make this a little bit thicker. That way, um, if she pulls it out, it won't it won't tear too quickly. Um, this this is for my best friend's daughter. So if she does end up ruining it, I can always make her another one. Um, so the papers I picked are just this pink polka dot and this love cupcake hugs BFF kind of paper. So since these are already scrap pieces, I'm just going to put my tape on my bookmark. And again, I'm going to try to get as close to the edge as possible. This I do the same size without the border. And I'm just going to pull them down the middle. And then I'm just going to line it up with this paper. There we go. And then with my ruler, I'm just going to trim this paper. We have one side of the bookmark, and now I'm going to do the same with the other side. So she'll have cute little papers on both sides. Wow, this, this roll is definitely giving me some fits. Again, I'm just going to line it up with my paper. And then we will trim that off. have a bookmark. So then I'm going to punch this. So I have a little bit of space on the top that will kind of stick out of the book but not too too far. And I did have a template for that too. Oh, there it is. Of course I didn't grab it. So I made a removable bookmark punching template, template also. Um, because I screw up a lot punching. If I don't have something that tells me that it is centered, it's not going to be centered. So, um, I made a template already, so I'm just going to line that up and make sure that it's lined up. And again, I'm going to stick it in here. And this top hole, I want to kind of match down here. So I'm going to line up my second hole um, with my little notch over here on this side. And then I'm going to go ahead and punch. And then I'm going to take the template out and I'm going to move it over one. Now, how did I do that? Okay, here we go. Okay. So we're punched here, we're going to take it out, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to line this hole up with this last hole here, and then it will line up with the notch over here, and we're going to punch again. 
And then there we have the bookmark punched and ready to go. So to make this removable, I've seen this done um, several different places on YouTube. Friends of mine have done it and everything and I didn't start doing it until I started making these books. But this is the part that's going to make it removable. In between each one of these little rectangles that I have punched, I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut right in the middle of that one, that one, that one, and as you can see it it opens that up. That's what's going to make it removable. You'll be able to take it out and put it back in. So you just cut all the middles and then it should look like that. So I'm going to go ahead and place this inside. I usually just place this right here in the front and then it sticks out just a little bit. And now I'm going to show you how I do the little zipper pouch. I went to the store to get some more zip bags and I use the slider ones. It's a lot easier for kids and I think it's closer to a little ziplock or a, a little pencil type pouch anyway. So what I do is I'm going to cut this bag down to five and a quarter and then I'm going to adhere the inside of the bag together with score tape. If I didn't lose it, there it is. And then I'm going to take a piece of cardstock. This is one inch by eight inches and I'm going to score it in half and then I'm going to adhere that to the bag and then I'm going to punch it and put it inside the front of my pages. So I'm actually going to use my rotary cutter for this. So I'm going to take my slider side and I'm going to line it up with my five and a quarter. And I will say I used some of the off-brand zip bags, slider bags. And they work just fine, but these were actually on sale, so they were cheaper when I went to go buy more. And this is the Ziploc brand. And I will tell you, I do like these better. This is very proportioned. It's straight. It's They are a lot nicer. But like I said, I have used the other ones in several books. And um, they work just as good. So I just cut this part off. Now I'm going to move that because I don't need it. And then this opens up the bottom of my bag. So I'm going to take a piece of score tape and I'm going to put it inside. Sometimes this is a little tricky because these bags are kind of thin. And this one has this little extra piece because it's I don't know, some kind of bog bag with um, like a bottom on it instead of just the regular zip bag. So now let's see how easy this will be. Like I said, these are pretty thin. Once you get that first piece on there, it's kind of easy. Well, I don't know if easy is the right word. Ah, uh, see it's not, okay. So I'm going to stick this along the bag. And I'm kind of holding the bag down with my fingers over here so it doesn't get all um, bunched up when I'm trying to do this. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this side instead of try to tear that. So there's my piece of score tape. I'll go over it with my bone folder and then I'm going to peel it up and I'm going to hold this up so it doesn't lay down on itself yet. 
And then if you just let it kind of close by itself, it'll it'll close up nice and smooth. So there we go. There's our little homemade zipper pouch. Now I'm going to score this in half. Like I said, this is one inch by eight inches. So I'm just going to score it at half an inch. And I moved. <laughs> Here we go. Half an inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold this. And then I'm going to use some more score tape on either side. Then I'm going to wrap this around the bottom of the little bag. So the easiest way to do this is to just peel one end and then have that end up so that way you can line this up without sticking it down and you want it all the way in there and then all you're going to do it is kind of slippery is just press it down so that will stay and then you just flip it over and peel the other side off And since this side's already stuck, you don't have to do any lining. You just have to go ahead and press that down. So we're going to go ahead and punch this. And again, if you made a guide like I did, I'm going to take that guide and I'm going to line it up here on the bottom. And I'm going to put it in there. And get this punched. And I'm going to move it over. Line that up. Punch it again. And this is where I will flip it over and punch it one more time. And there we have it, our little, some of the adhesive came through, try to rub it off, there we go. So here's our zipper pouch, and I just put that right in the front, so that fits just like that, and now I think what else do we have left? We have... Um, okay, let's do the hinge. This is where we're going to do the hinge. This is, um, this is pretty simple. It's just some cutting and some scoring. So, I have an 8.5 by 11 piece. And if you don't want, if you want your whole inside of your binder covered, you can adjust the measurements. This is just how I do it. So I'm going to take this 8.5 by 11 piece. I'm going to cut it down to, where's that? I'm going to take my 8.5 inch side and I'm going to cut it down to 8. So it will be the same size as my pages. So I'm only cutting half an inch off. And that's it. That's it for the cutting. 
And now I'm going to take my scoreboard and along the 11 inch side, I'm going to score this at five and a half. Then I'm going to flip it over. This just makes my folding easier. And then I'm going to score it at four and three quarters and six and one quarter. So that's it for that. Pretty simple. Then I'm gonna fold along that five and a half score line that I did. And then I'm going to back fold on the other score marks on either side. So this one will go this way. Then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna fold the other one the opposite direction. That didn't line up very well. There we go. So you will have something that looks like this. This is what's going to form the M shape inside of our binder. So then you're gonna open it up to where your score marks are on the left hand side. And you're gonna take your binder punching system. And again, I'm gonna use my template, tap that down and make sure it's lined up and I'm gonna punch again. And this is so I know that this is going to line up with everything else. And that completes all of the punching. Now this piece, after punched, you will still have your flaps that you will fold back, but we won't do that until we're ready to put it inside the book. So this is going to be the very last thing that you add to your rings or wires. If there's anything else that you want to add to this book before you close it up, you do need to not put anything in front of this. This has to be the very last piece that you put in. So there is absolutely nothing that I want in this book. So I'm going to show you how to close this up. Um, if yours is completed. Now using the bind it all, this is how I have learned, I'm trying to get this level. Mine is already set to three quarters of an inch because that is the most common size that I use. So it's already measured or sized. I'm gonna take my rings. I'm not sure if you guys can really see this on the camera. Try to get a little closer. I'm gonna take my rings and make sure that they're flat. This can only push in about six rings at a time. Actually, whoops, knocking things over here. Okay, there we go. I'm actually gonna stand up and do this so I can see. Now I put the the smaller wires facing the Zutter machine and the bigger wire facing the back. So I'm gonna put that in and try to center my pages on top of the wires and then I'm just gonna push down and close those up. And then I'm gonna move over and do six more. And then I'm gonna do the last four. Um, Mine do not always turn out to be perfect O's. In fact, some of these are already a little tighter. I'm just gonna pull them open a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm not the perfect binder at all by any means. So I'm still learning how to um, get that thing to work the way I want. So once your rings are closed up, then this is going to become, this will wrap around and this is going to be attached 
to the inside of our binder just like this and I will show you how to attach this so this side will be attached here and this side will be attached here then you will take your cover pieces and put them on the inside so let's go ahead and do that since I'm completed with mine um, I'm not gonna add or take away anything and again you're going to use some score tape or red liner tape or something that's really strong for this part because it is it is the binding and you don't want this to come off so I'm gonna go ahead and close this up for a second because that's kind of crazy pattern there and I'm going to put score tape along the side here. So that side, I'm gonna do both the top and the bottom, but I'm not gonna go all the way over. I'm going to leave about, let me see, oh, about an inch and a quarter almost, right there. I'm going to do that to both sides. I'm going to flip it over and do the back side. Um, I always forget to do this before I put this in here and close it up. I always tell myself I'm going to do it when it's not attached. That way it's completely flat and I never do. So I've gotten quite used to doing it this way. And again, about an inch and a quarter inch. You know, you just don't want to go all the way over because it does need a little bit of wiggle room inside of the binder. Okay, so there's that. And now I'm actually going to, and like I said, I'm really sorry for these crazy patterns. I'm going to cover them up really quick so you guys can't really, they're crazy. So lining up the spine folded over piece, whatever you want to call this, um, that's where I'm going to put a line of score tape. So I'm just going to go right underneath. That's all the way across to this side. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. And this will keep it from moving on the inside but we do need the room right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to take these off for now. And what you want this to do is you want to line this up, try to center it, and you want this piece here to go inside this crease. So then when you do this side, you fold this side up, you want to push this piece of cardstock down into that crease. So you want it to close up to where you see the little M inside there. It will meet perfectly to the creases. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove my score tape from this side and from these three pieces I think I have that pretty centered so we'll take it off of here and this side <laughs> if I can get it Okay, now the easiest way for me to do this is to have the cover facing away from me. I lift up this side and I'm going to line this up right in the crease again. Make sure that it's still 
centered. Holding the bottom, I'm going to make sure that when I fold this up, that this piece of cardstock slips down into that groove. So that way it doesn't, it will be lined up. And I'm not quite lined up. There we go. So this, just push that down. And then you're just going to let it kind of fall where it needs to. And it will just line up. So then I'm going to take my bone folder. And I'm just going to crease that down. Push all that down. Make sure that that score tape sticks. And then I know that my score tape is right here along this line here. So now I'm going to do the same to the opposite side. And this will be the back. So I'm going to pull these off. this piece and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lift up this side whoops, and I'm going to let it kind of lean up against me as I line this up and make sure that this is down into that groove there and just let it just let it go and then go ahead and help Secure it down. And then right along the other score tape. And there I have my book is basically bound into the hinge with the binding. So now I'm going to go ahead and cover the inside pieces. And I use Score tape for that also, just because I don't want them coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and stick score tape all along four sides. I just do not want this to lift up as she uses this book. So I know that this will help keep it all together. Um, I am going to put some ATG tape in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off all of these score tape strips. Just like that, and I'm going to take my ATG tape, and I'm going to I'm going to run about four strips down the middle of this, just to make sure that it's going to stay. So I'm going to flip it over and make sure that my pattern is facing the right direction, and I'm going to concentrate on lining my my three sides over here as far as the border part goes to make sure that it's even. I think that looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and adhere that down. Go over it with my bone folder and just give it a really good press. That way I know it's not going to come up. Do this side over here and up top here. Here. And I'm going to go over the middle where I put the ATG tape and just give it a good rub. So then there is the inside cover. I'm going to do the same with the back side. And this basically completes our book. Um, I don't think I have anything else on the list that I need to show you. Oh, I will show you how to do the P 
paperclip flags that I do after this. So basically after you get the entire book together you can work on any little accessories that you want to create for it um, that you may want to put in the pockets and whatnot. So you do not have to add a pouch in the front if you do not want to. I do not have one in mine. Um, so I didn't think about it until I was making Caleb's and with him being a little kid I wanted him to be able to store stuff for his smash book in his smash book so he didn't have to hunt it down. So all, all of the smash books I have made besides the one for myself do have pouches because um, I have made them all for um, kids I know. My niece and nephew and now my best friend's girls. So you, you can skip that part if you don't want to do it. Or if you don't want to do the bookmarks, you don't have to do the bookmarks. I mean, you can pick and choose what you want. Um, I know a lot of you just wanted to know how to do this part, the binding, and that's fine, you know, however you want to create your book. Um, so there we go. This one is basically done. I just have to add stuff to the inside. So there we have our book. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop here because I'm going to, um, I'm going to get the stuff ready to do um, the little paper clip flags and then I'm going to show you how to do the, the pen loop that will go on the inside of the book right here. And I think that's it. Let me check. Yeah, the pen loop and um, the paper clip flags. So I will show you those in the next video. I See you guys in the next one. Bye.